Maddie, it's great to have you back on the show. Super excited to catch up with you. This is the first time we've been able to talk since the new album Broken has dropped, dude. I'm excited about it. Hey, I appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, for sure. This album kind of marks a big stylistic shift for you guys that uh, a lot of people kind of got a hint at with the song Virus. But uh, what kind of reactions have you gotten to that shift with this new record? Man, it was definitely really crazy at the jump. You know, going into writing and recording this record, we knew that there was going to be backlash for it. You know, I mean, people don't like a band to change. It's inevitable that that we're going to get some backlash for it. But um, I think, you know, having been a part of kind of the the, the metalcore wave uh, since the jump, uh, we just, you know, have seen over the years that we aren't able to reach as many people with our music, um, you know, continuing on with that genre. And um, for us, the most important thing about our music is that, you know, our message is heard and that, and that people are inspired and hopefully changed by it. And uh, so we wanted to write music that could reach um, you know, even more people and music that we really enjoy. Um, and we're all big rock fans and, um, have kind of, to be totally honest, outgrown the, the, the metalcore phase in our career. And, uh, so we were really excited about a change, but we knew it was going to take some, some time for people to get used to it, you know? And, um, so we're, we're excited about the record. Our first single, um, has been at radio for quite some time now and, and just broke into the top 20 a couple weeks ago and is still hanging on there. And we're really excited to see, um, you know, that what we're trying to do is, is working. So it's cool. Sweet deal, man. Sweet deal. And of course, what a lot of fans I think don't think about when they see a, a band that they really enjoy kind of make a, a big stylistic change is that while you may not be recording the exact same kind of genre that you had before, it's not like you guys won't perform any of the songs from earlier in your catalog. So they still get all that, but now they get something a little different as well. That's so true, man. I mean, you know, like when we dropped unconditional, which was like our, our top selling record of all time. We got a bunch of backlash for it sounding too much like Challenger. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then and then with this record, it doesn't sound like other records. So it's like it doesn't matter what we do, you know, people are gonna be angry one way or the other. So we have to write music that we're excited about, you know? It is quite a quite a bit of change, but uh but you're right, man. I mean, all those records uh from the past will always exist. You know, we are still the band that wrote those records. And you're right, we're always gonna be playing those songs live. And so, you know, if you come out to a Memphis Mayfire show, it's always gonna be a Memphis Mayfire show. Well, here's kind of an abstract question for that, uh talking about kind of how like at this point, like after you get especially even just one or two albums in there's nothing that you can do that's going to please everybody you're gonna sure. always have that risk of, of people being inevitably mad about something with it uh do you ever wish that you could perpetually make the first record where it was just like it, there were no real expectations you were just going in and, and making music and, and people were just liking it for it being that thing yeah i think that you know that that's a season that every band only gets to have once you know and and it I'm thankful for for having that season. I don't at all wish to go back. I'm so excited about the future and where we're headed as a band that um, you know I don't I don't desire to to relive that that season. Um, but I would give the advice to, to any band that's about to put out their first record to really take their time with it. I mean, you have your whole life to write your first record, and then once things get into motion, you know it's a lot more stressful to be touring full time and writing and recording and all everything that comes with it. So you know if you are about to make your first record. Uh, take your time and enjoy it and uh, and enjoy the ride. There you go. So what I'm hearing is that you don't want to go back to the old you. <laughs> well, definitely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's hilarious, man. Um, yeah. No, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> well, since I have, have uh, unwittingly stumbled into that uh, train of thought, uh, let's talk about the single The Old Me. I, I just got through watching the video for it. And I got to say, man, that is an intense video. I really like it. It's crazy, man. Yeah. And I mean, if it wasn't enough to be, you know, covered in fake blood and, you know, buried in a grave and, you know, fist fighting a body double and all that stuff, we shot for like 36 hours straight and all oh. through the night and it was freezing cold outside. It was a really challenging video to make, but um, it's such an honor to work with Caleb Mallory who produced that video that, um, you know, I was just willing to, to do whatever. And, uh, and I, and I love it. Yeah. The, all the videos he's ever done for us have come out great. And, and that one is, uh, is no exception. 
Very cool, man. I have like this weird theory that music videos are always meant to somehow have some sort of misery associated with the shooting of them. The last band I had on said that they were like on the fourth floor with no elevator, surrounded by homeless people, and it was in the middle of a tropical storm. So... <laughs> Yep. It's always something. It's like it's always you either have to be in the water in February or you're in the Mojave Desert and they want you to wear a jacket and there's always something weird. <laughs> spot on, dude. You're spot on. I could I could go on and on and on about that. Well, aside from the video, let's talk about the song itself. I mean, I, I think a lot of people probably kind of get it or at least have theories about it. But uh, tell us about what was going on in your head for that song when you wrote it. Well, you know, I think one of the most amazing things about music is that I can write a song that's so personal to me and it can translate into so many different ways and become somebody else's story, you know, and inspire them that way. So, you know, when people listen to our music, I do want them to make of it what they want to make of it. Um, but yeah, I mean, if, if you do know about my story, um, you'll know that song is very much about my struggle with anxiety and depression um, and kind of what it's like, the inner battle that almost feels like good and evil, um, you know, between good and evil. And, uh, so that's, that's what the music video portrays as well as, you know, the old me was a carefree, um, you know, just kind of having fun and going through life and, and, and enjoying every moment without having to worry about the symptoms of panic or the symptoms of depression, um, creeping up and, and, and taking over. And, um, so it's like this, this ongoing battle. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm so happy to say that at this point in my life, I've been anxiety and depression free for a few years and it's such a blessing. Um, but I'll never forget what it was like. And I want to write songs about it so that people who are going through it to feel, you know, don't feel like they're alone in it. Uh, cause I think that's the first step to healing. So, yeah, I mean, the song is, is, is all about my battle with anxiety and depression and trying to make my way back to that person who didn't have to be so fearful of the next panic attack or the next time I f was going to feel like I was trapped in a deep, dark hole and trying to claw my way out. For sure. For sure. It's interesting. Anytime somebody brings up anxiety and depression, it always feels like there's at least uh, broadly speaking, two camps that people, especially Christians seem to fall into and either, a, that, you know, it's something that you have to give over completely to God and only God can take that sort of thing away and heal it. And then other people who are like, you know, if 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 it's a chemical imbalance of some sort and it's something that you're going to chronically deal with, there's nothing wrong with with getting God involved. Obviously, God should be involved in every part of your life. But at the same time, you know, medication is, can be something that can be helpful. Do you have a, a a particular side of that that you tend to fall on more than others and i don't want to like start up a controversy or anything but just kind no, of where please, you feel please like do you start up a controversy i love that <laughs> stuff um <laughs> yeah man so here's where i'm at with it in the midst of going through it i was convinced that it was spiritual warfare because i felt like i would wake up in the middle of the night and see this like dark demonic figure that was hovering over my bed and like trying to crush me and it was just this really poisonous experience um wow Having come out on the other side, I learned that God was involved every step of the way and was right there with me, walking through that season with me. And he allowed me to go through it so that I could walk through that season with friends and family and fans who are also going through that season and offer advice and, and just be there with them. Um, so, I mean, he's definitely allowed me to go through it so that I could use it, um, you know, for, for other people and, and to continue his story um, with it. But I do... Uh, having gotten to the other side of all that, uh, I do think that I, I gave way too much credit to the spiritual aspect of the anxiety and depression. I think that it was a chemical imbalance. I do believe that. I think that, um, you know, if you want to trace it all the way back to Adam and Eve or whatever, the human body is simply imperfect because of sin. So right. we could go down that road if you want. Um, but the human body is imperfect. And, um, you know, I had done years and years of touring of just eating so poorly and treating my body so poorly and um, not at all nourishing my mental health because I didn't even know how to do that or, or, or why I needed to do that. Sure. And so one day I woke up and my whole life was falling apart and I had no idea where to start. And it was through um, therapy. And I did do faith-based therapy, but um, if you're listening to this interview and you're not a believer, I would say go and do any kind of therapy. Um, yeah, I think that therapy is, is miraculous. Um, just sitting in a room with someone that you trust that, that, is willing to hear you out and offer advice. I think that there's so much healing in that moment. Um, you know, I also did medication for a year that was really helpful and just through all that learned so much more about 
my mentality and my body and all those things that play a role in anxiety and depression. Um, and, and yeah, I do, I do believe it's a chemical imbalance. I think there's also, um, you know, different layers of anxiety and depression. I think that some people's is, you know, simply situational, um, and some are are chemical and, and, and some are, are, you know, strictly mental. It just depends on who you are and what you're going through and where you're at in life. Um, but I think that it's a, it's a very complex thing to, to try to say that it's caused by one thing or can be solved by one thing. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I mean, to me, it feels like the kind of thing where everybody would like for it to be boiled down to one right answer, because if you did that, then it's easy. But I, I don't think there's anything easy about that. And it's it's nice to to hear people say, look, I mean, there's there could be multiple answers and it maybe you have to even be a combination of some of those things to make it work. Um, and, you know, then that's OK. So I'm, I'm right there. with totally. you. Totally. Man. Absolutely. Man. Yeah. Absolutely. I think God is capable of, of doing anything. So, you know, we can absolutely believe that if we pray that God will take anxiety away, that he will do it. But oftentimes, at least in, in my life, that's not how God works. You know, he allows us to go through things so that we can learn and grow from it. So, you know, the only people that I've ever talked to that believe that, you know, anxiety will simply be prayed away are people that have never gone through it themselves. You know, <laughs> and, uh, So... You know, it's just, that's, that's the reality of it, you yeah. know? Um, but you know, I'm, I'm on both sides of the fence. So I feel you, man. I feel you for one. First off, I, I don't wish for anyone to have to go through that. Cause I've had people in my life who have had to endure that as well. And it's, it's not easy or pretty, but at the same time, I'm, I'm glad that that is something that you've been able to utilize in a positive way to help others. I think that's fantastic. Yeah. I appreciate it, man. It has been a huge blessing in my life for sure. Awesome. Awesome. Well, on to somewhat less weighty things. Earlier, I just kind of touched on the idea of the the song Virus being kind of almost like kind of a a testing ground for the new sound. Uh, Was there a particular reason why that did not end up on the album Broken when it came out? So when we did Virus, we were trying out a new producer for the first time, you know, kind of just going about things his way. Mm -hmm. Um, And so just the vibe of that song in general, not necessarily the songwriting or anything, but just a lot of the tonality of it and everything didn't fit the vibe of the record as a whole okay because when we went back in to do the whole record you know we wanted to make it our our record you know we wanted to make it a memphis mayfire record so just the tones in general are different the way we cut vocals is different you know all around so um it was it was meant to be a single and nothing else okay cool that's fair enough i knew there had to be a reason i just wasn't sure what it was (laughs) yeah yeah totally it's that simple nice nice very cool so uh Aside from just the the style in general, has there been anything else about this record that has really stood out to you as either something that has been a learning experience for you or something that you're just uniquely proud of in terms of this record? Absolutely, man. Yeah. So, um, you know, when the band started, you know, I, I don't know. I, I feel, I feel like I'm being annoying when I tell my story because I've told it so many times on podcasts and stuff. <laughs> so um, hopefully if you're listening, you, you haven't already heard this a million times, but you know, in the earlier years of the band, I was really wrapped up in just the success aspect of it and, uh, and wanting to further our career. And really ultimately I was just serving myself a lot, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, when I had started to go through that season of anxiety and depression, um, it caused me to, uh, reach out for God in, in a way that I never really had before. I had always just been carrying my parents' faith and uh, never really had found God on my own. And, and so in that season, I was forced to do that. And it was really healthy for me to do that. But um, at the same time, it, once I started doing that, it's all that I wanted to write about. So I started being so much more bold in my faith um, with with our album, Unconditional. And um, going forward from there into this lot I hold, you know, I kind of carried that same message and was as following that path still, always wanting to write songs that felt hopeful. I was felt like I was doing our fans a disservice if I was writing songs that didn't always have a light at the end of the tunnel. When we were going into the writing process for this record, I felt God say to me, you know, Matt, when was the first time that you felt relief from your anxiety and depression? Was it when somebody patted you on the back and said everything's gonna be okay, or when you heard a song that felt hopeful? And and the answer was no. The answer was the first time I ever felt relief from anxiety was when I was listening to a CD and there's a microphone in the middle of the room and there's a bunch of people standing around it and they were all explaining what it was like to have a panic attack. There's nothing hopeful at all in that. Right. It was so hopeful because it made me realize that I wasn't alone, you know, and I think that 
everyone in the human race is broken in their own way. We're all broken in one way or another. And uh, when we write songs about our brokenness, it can, it can help to start that healing process. When you hear a song that you feel like someone can relate or somebody understands what it is that you're going through, um, you know, cause people need people. And uh, so I wanted this record, you know, there's obviously victorious moments in the record, but more than anything, I wanted it to be full of anthems for people that were in the worst seasons of their life, just to feel like someone understood what they were going through and that they weren't alone. Fantastic. All about that, man. That's awesome. Of course, you guys are, are out on tour right now and you're headed towards the next stop. First off, tell us about the tour that you're on at the moment and, and kind of how you feel like it's going, especially with the new music being part of it. Yeah, it's going really good, man. So we're out on a headlining tour right now in support. We have our friends uh, called He Is Legend mm -hmm. uh, playing with us. And um, yeah, man, it's been it's been really good. We're only a few shows in. It's kind of a short run. Um, we've got this one. And then in, you know, a, a less than a month or so, we go out with this band called Pop Evil. It's a, like active rock band. Yeah. But it's it's really crazy. Like we definitely have our core following and Memphis fans coming out to these shows and it's awesome. But we also have this whole new market of people that are coming out to the shows and singing along to the new songs even louder than the old songs. Nice. And, uh, so it's just really it's really rad to see how much this record being at radio and everything has had an impact for us to be able to play for people that maybe never even heard of us before or never got into us before and now and now they're starting to do that. So it's been it's been really rad, man. We're excited about it. Nice, nice. Now, before uh, before you guys had gone kind of in this stylistic direction, I mean, were you guys doing tours with bands like Pop Evil that kind of fit in that same kind of genre before? No. No, yeah, we were never like before this. We had never really tried um, the active rock circuit. Our first like tour with in that active rock world was with Seven Dust, okay. and then um, you know we went out and did a tour with Atreyu, and they've had a lot of success in active rock, and um, and now this headliner. And then you know we've got we've got just a handful of stuff coming up, but it is definitely like it's kind of like starting over. It's like a new season, but it, it feels really refreshing. It's just a lot of fun. Very cool. Very cool. And I also saw that you guys were going to be uh, kind of on what I, I suppose is like the last run of the warp tour as well. Yeah, dude, you know, what's funny hmm. is I didn't even know that we were on it until the day that it got announced, <laughs> um, which is, which is not the case ever um, with any <laughs> tour or anything like that. Um, but we actually have a different summer tour that we're doing. Yeah. And um, that's already been confirmed, but hasn't been announced yet. And I guess that those dates are getting rolled into the Warp Tour dates. Oh, okay. I got you. So it just, it, it made sense for it to be a part of the routing. So that's why we're on those shows. Okay. Um, but yeah, we're really stoked, man. I think this might be the the last hurrah ever for you know warp tour so we're really excited to to be a part of those shows nice nice very cool man that's awesome now uh, on a completely different train of thought when it comes to concerts and whatnot of course i ran into you at the uh, newsboys united tour yeah man here in nashville uh how did you enjoy that show dude it was awesome man i mean that's that's my childhood you yeah. know um that's my roots and um low-key uh, well, maybe not even low key because everyone that I've ever talked to about this uh, knows this about me. But I think that Michael Tate 